uh, to introduce our team. We have two team members who unfortunately aren't able to join us this evening. Um, uh, one is Ella, um, uh, Ella Clark. She's having Zoom issues, unfortunately, in the classic way that things happen. Um, so she would be here if she could, but uh, Zoom is refusing to let her join us. So we can blame a large international uh, and she said she dropped her phone into a puddle today, and that's probably partly the reason. Probably part of the problem. <laughs> um, and Johnny, so who, um, uh, uh, Johnny Hibbs, who was also one of our young uh, dancers in the project, um, because he's just started at um, uh, London School of Contemporary. No, London, London Studio. Studio Centre. London Studio Centre. I knew I was going to get that wrong. <laughs> and London Studio Centre, and literally went down um, about uh, a week ago. No, he started on Monday, so he's actually in class, <laughs> which is a fair enough reason not to be able to be here. Um, the third uh, dancer who uh, was part of this brilliant project is Ellie um, McPherson, who's on the screen here. Yay! Thank you for waving at the opportune moment. Um, we brought together a crack team to uh, uh, work on this. Um, we had Harry here, who's in person. Hello. Harry Scott. And uh, Daisy Harrison. I'm still learning everyone's surnames and I'm having a small panic, but I'm gonna get everyone's surnames wrong. So far, I've actually got them right, but I'm having a panic. Uh, Daisy, who's up here on the screen. Perfect, thank you. Um, uh, who've been working um, with uh, the young dancers throughout lockdown and throughout um, the summer in both a mix of analogue and digital, um, helping them think about their choreographic voice and how they create and how we create in isolation or what's it like to be a dancer when you can't be in a room together and, and what could be made as a result. And so they've been absolutely extraordinary facilitators on this. Um, we also have on the screen here, we have Zach Walker up here in the, um, wow, in a hi-fi room of extraordinary. <laughs> um, so Zach has been the visual digital artist who's been working with us and is part of um, uh, the new direction we're going in with the Barbican, which very much comes from my passions, I'm just going to admit that right now, um, uh, which is not what today's about. That's next week. If you want to find out more about that, come to next week. Hey. Uh, <laughs> we also have Dan Martin here, who we've worked with hugely in the past. He's a fantastic filmmaker. So he was working with the young people, looking at um, everything from how you develop your uh, choreography for film, how you think about shots, how you think about uh, the process behind it, and then of course it's the, um, the eyes behind the camera that, and the, uh, that has made such a beautiful piece that we're about to see. Um, and then we have uh, the rest of the Barbican team. So I've introduced myself, I've said too much already. Um, we also have the fabulous um, Susie Ware. So Susie has previously been leading on what we've called Fuse, which is all of our um, uh, dance programming. She's now the co-lead on the Rebels, uh, and uh, her <laughs> it, it, we, between the two of us, we're coming up with far too many plans. It's going to be great. So it's going to be a good, uh, a good, it's a yeah. dangerous mix. It's a really dangerous <laughs> mix. Um, but what we're really excited to do is, I'm going to hand over to to the film. To the film. It's just yeah. straight to the film. Mm -hmm. Okay. Co-created by the team of the Digital Rebels. This young collective choreographed content and designed with the uh, digital and visual artist um, Zach Walker, filmmaker Dan Martin, practitioners Daisy Harrison and Harry Scott, and producers Laura Kreefman and Susie West. They used dance and technology to explore memories of their bodies in isolation, and it was a combination of a digital and analog creative process whilst locked away from each other. And this is the butterfly effect.
like to sort of talk a little bit more about what, what we've seen now. Have you got a, a question for the audience? Or? I think we're uh, just uh, a really nice open one about kind of like what's that like or something to watch as a starting point. I, I, became, I became quite hypnotised by it. I think it's the layers and layers and layers and you're trying to follow something through and then something else takes you and it, it's disorienting in a good way. Um, when you watch it, you feel like you're ready to do a lot of things, like you get a lot of energy. Did anyone feel something totally different or think anything totally different when they were watching it? I feel like you can get lost in, like just find yourself lost and like not entirely paying attention but managing to take everything in at the same time. I finished too soon. <laughs> yeah, I, that. I had that moment just then. I was like, oh, cool, we're just really going. And I was like, oh, no, we're finished. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I yeah. hope that's a good sensation. Even yeah. like <laughs> one left wanting yeah, more, more is always yeah. the, uh, you know, the goal, isn't it? Hypnotizing, mesmerizing, you get lost in it, over too soon. Energizing, is the word? I wonder, it would be interesting to talk to Ellie in a little while about whether any of those sensations were ones that Ellie had, and the, were the starting points of any of the movement content or not. I wonder if we could maybe talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, that would be really interesting. Ellie, do you, do you have any thoughts on that? Those words that were given to, given to us just then, did they connect to in any way to how you felt when you were dancing? Um, definitely... Uh the way I felt when we were dancing, when we were filming, that whole the whole experience was very surreal. Almost, uh, I think we used the word trippy quite a few times. Uh, that that's definitely they definitely resonate with the, how the day went. Anyone anyone else wants to add to that on the celebrity squares behind? <laughs> So, am I right in thinking that the, pi the piece was made in isolation and then you came together for a day yeah. to film and capture the essence of it? Mm -hmm. yeah, we did have a couple of um, predominantly online workshops with Zach and Dan and also a Bacani pickup. We kind of came from like a choreographic movement place. Um, but then, as we kind of came into September, we began to meet up, we did like a location, because we did also do some filming outside, some of it has worked its way in, but the, the auditorium and stuff kind of came out a lot stronger. Um, but yeah, so we met up, I think it was just the one day really, to, mm -hmm. to kind of like bring together our, all the young people's kind of individual movement journeys into the same space, and then the filming day. So yeah. Great. Um, um, we I think we should bring Zach in on this as well because I think one of the things that um, I came in the middle of the afternoon because we were in the middle of 82 other things and um, probably it was one of my favourite moments of walking into a, 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 into an auditorium when a, when a project is being created because at that point in time Zach was basically standing somewhere towards the back of the room and uh, Johnny, and I think it might have been um, Ellie at the time, were uh, behind the control desk and were controlling all the colours on the visuals and everything that was happening with the lights, which was creating that kind of like changing sequencing and creating that reflectioning. And I think either you or Daisy were on the camera and were controlling the shots that we were catching, which creates those, those memories. And then another member of the team is dancing and responding to that. And then somebody else was feeding in um, ideas to help with the improvisation and to allow the movement to grow. And when I, I worked dances on kind of like interactive movement work for donkey's years, and it normally takes me about two years after somebody's come out training to get them to that point of ease of being that collaborative, that open, that responsive to each other. And these guys have been in here with the kit for about maybe two hours, Zach, was it? Yeah, by the time we got started, probably about two hours. I mean, and that's extraordinary. And it was so exciting as a, a thing to see. Um, 
So let's let's let Zach have a bit of, a, of an introduction then to tell us a little bit what your one day was like with our <coughs> rebels, um, and then you can carry on with the discussion from there. What was it like? I sort of mentioned I'm. What I'm really interested in is using old technology and new technology at the same time, and how those two have so much to complement each other. They're, they're, so feed, video feedback is just, it's like in, 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 in terms of music, it's like Jimi Hendrix uh, playing the guitar and feeding it back. Like what that sound did to rock and roll and music is what I feel like feedback as an essential sort of effect does for video is it's, it is so enjoyable to watch and to be a part of because all you're doing is uh, pointing a camera at either a TV or a projection screen that is that is got the signal from the camera. So you're 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 filming the thing that you're filming the thing that you're filming the thing that you're filming. And when you move um, dancers into that space, it just becomes this wonderful. Uh, it's about movement, light, and kind of speed i guess or, or camera angles but it's it's so simple and, and it's so incredible so we thank you zach has anyone got any questions about the technology that was used in the film or about zach's process yeah what are the and this is something maybe not to answer now but to think about how can things not in the dance world and not in the sort of creative industries world learn from the processes you've been through in creativity in terms of how we work in this new virtual environment so how can we take the positives and put it into the work I do running the city mm -hmm. um, how can we make our thinking better how can we make us more creative through having to interact through at times 20 screens mm -hmm. um, and, uh, because it can be tiring but also can we get the best? And I'm, I'm, I'm often worrying we're not getting the best. So you must have been doing that. So being able to learn some of those lessons and almost put those into something that other people can learn from would be, I think, in this environment, really encouraging. So the more you do, I suppose, the more you learn, the more you can. But it's actually sharing that so it's able to be used in other ways would be, I think, really interesting. It's a good question, isn't it? Really good question. How we, how we can put our learning into practice for other people in different scenarios in terms of using technology and having discussions and long conversations and long thin projects that have to be in isolation. It's a great question. I don't have an answer to that right now, but we're going to really good one. Enjoy figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing it open now for sort of other questions, either from everyone over here who wants to swears or from, from, from you lot about what we've heard. One of the interesting things, just because there seems to be tumbleweeds, so I'm going <laughs> to jump in on the tumbleweeds. Um, one of the really exciting things, or one of the things I'm really, uh, I really loved about seeing as a process and seeing how the tech team work was everyone was stood straight away thinking about where else and how else mm -hmm. and what else we want to do. So there were conversations about uh, could this go into the new dome at the marketplace and be ported out mm -hmm. so it's in 360 mm -hmm. and you've got the camera on a roving rig so somebody's following around the dancers in the centre and then there's the audience and then they're projected all around you. Could it be... Um, rock up and play and projected on the side of buildings in the cities the dancers roll out on the van and there's a projector in the van and it all you know is it done more formally for some of the festivals in the city mm -hmm. um what's the next version how do we create more choreographic material for it rather than just um shorter sequences and improvised elements you know we did filming down um on the hoe uh right inside yeah the bay. and and so that to me is like the sign of a really healthy project where you you where the ideas are really bubbling and everyone's thinking about what next and how does that team and how do those collaborators mm -hmm. work. 